Hamilton's Antler the Buttery Babe. Today we're making a kohlrabi roasty. Sounds crazy and exotic, but it's super delicious. It's really simple. We have grated kohlrabi, some eggs, chives fresh from the garden, and a little bit of flour, and we'll put some oil and butter in the pan. To get started, we're going to grate our kohlrabi. So you already saw me pick it out of the garden, and maybe you even saw me how to clean them. You want to make sure when you take off the leaves, you can save them and cook them like kale, and then peel the kohlrabi really well. And then you can totally do this in the food processor, but we only needed four, so I decided I'd go hand grating. I'm using the larger bowls of my box grater, and I'm carefully not putting my hand in front of it, though it would make it taste better, I heard. And then just when you get down to that little nub, ignore it. And I like to stick my hand inside there to make sure we get everything. And then off the kohlrabi goes into the bowl. So you bring this up here. Kohlrabi is a very wet vegetable. It has a lot of moisture in it, which is great if you're trying to stay hydrated. Not so great if you want to make a dish that'll hold together. So a roasty is like a giant potato pancake, except we're not using potatoes. We're using kohlrabi. And we're going to give it a squeeze to see how much water comes off of it. And we're not even really trying. So you want to squeeze out as much water as you can. Kind of crazy, right? I'm going to continue squeezing to get make sure that's really dry. We'll be back in a second. So we got all the water in the kohlrabi. Look at all that water that was in the kohlrabi. That was about four kohlrabis, three or four, and a ton of water. So our drain kohlrabi, we're going to dump into a nice big bowl. And to that, we're going to sprinkle on a quarter cup of flour. If you are um, using a gluten-free diet, you can use potato starch or corn starch or rice starch instead of the flour. This recipe is really forgiving. You just want to sprinkle it through like that so that the flour is evenly distributed amongst all the little kohlrabi bits. And then we're going to take a towel and wipe our hands down. We're going to take a tablespoon of butter and just put it in a skillet and turn that on. And we'll put that over medium so it can start melting. The skillet, this skillet is um, a beautiful skillet that is naturally nonstick from use. If you don't have one like that, you can use a nonstick skillet. So that's going to get a generous pinch of kosher salt and, of course, a couple of grinds of fresh cracked pepper from my pepper mill. And that's going to go down like that. And it's going to rest for a second. Let me clean off my work surface. Okay, now we can see. So this morning I went out before the thunderstorm started and I grabbed some chives. We're just going to take the chives and give them a quick mince. These are beautiful chives, fresh from my garden. If you don't have a garden, you can buy them at the grocery store. <laughs> you could also use parsley if you wanted. Just want something a little bit green and fresh to add to the pan. So that's got a quick chop. Those are going to go right to the bowl. As are two eggs. One, two. And we'll take our spoon and give the eggs a quick little stir so that they're blended. And then blend them right on in. This isn't really going to make a batter per se, just hold together. We want to make sure everything is thoroughly combined. And I can hear my butter is melted and happy, so as soon as this gets mixed up, off we go to the pan. Awesome. So we're back in our pan. The butter's got nice and brown while it's melting. I'm going to add a tablespoon of olive oil. And then we're going to add all of the kohlrabi at once because we're making a big cake. So that's all going to go in. You can hear that happy sound. 
get the oils hot and off. Okay, everybody's in. And now we're just going to take our mixing spoon, but you can use a spatula, and make an even cake. See how that's nice and even. And you can hear the butter sizzling away. And that's only on medium, because we want the whole rabbit to cook through. So just take a little bit more oil and squeeze it around the sides, or if you're using a thing. You see how nice and loose that is? That's what you want. And this is on medium. It's going to cook for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to 10 minutes on medium, and then we're going to flip it onto a plate and slide it back in the pan so that the other side can cook through and get nice and brown. We'll see you in 10. Okay, it's Emily Adler, the Buttery Babe, and I'm back with my kohlrabi roshti. As you can see, it's getting gold and brown around the edges, so now it's time to flip. And while I could probably flip it inside the pan, we're going to go the safer route, and we're going to slide it out onto a plate. And then we can put that back on the flame. Let's see if I'm talented enough to do this. I can flip it easier, the, easier in the pan than this way. But now we're going to go one, two, three. And it broke a little bit, but that's not a problem. We're just going to take it and flatten it back out. So you see how it's nice and brown and it's starting to get custardy. We're going to add a little bit more oil. You could add more butter too, I'm just saying. And we're going to let that cook for 10 more minutes until it's golden brown on the far side. We'll see you in a few. Hey, it's Emily Hutchins Ambler, the Buttery Babe, with our kohlrabi roshi. So we cooked it on both sides, about 10 minutes each. My flip side's going to be prettier. Let me see if I can flip it in the pan for a better presentation. Ah, so much easier than flipping it on a plate. But you'll see how it's nice and golden and delicious. We're going to turn that flame over, off, slide them on out to the plate. And now, if my camera girl would just turn around. So, remember we had in here shredded kohlrabi, which we dried, and we had chives and eggs. And a little bit of flour just to help hold it together because the kohlrabi doesn't have any of its own starch. And salt and pepper. And then we just sauteed it up in a little bit of butter, of course, and olive oil. So look at that. Oh my goodness, can you even see through the seam? We've got the beautiful, beautiful shreds. We've got the brightness of the kohlrabi and the chives. And a nice GBD, golden brown and delicious. And I'm just going to take a little bite. Oh my goodness. So delicious. You could serve the sour cream. You could put a fried egg on top. You would just eat it as it is. It's good hot like this or at room temperature. It's perfect for an appetizer or a side dish with some nice roast chicken, a little steak. Y'all love it. It's Emily Cutchins Adler, the Buttery Babe. Please remember to follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and of course my website, www.butterybabe.com.